Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. And today's winning ticket was just submitted 13 minutes ago Ooh. by So Live. Nice. $10 into $1,600 oh. on this same game parlay between the Detroit Pistons and the uh, Brooklyn Nets, excuse me, and Washington Wizards. Hit the over, hit the under, hit the points, hit the rebounds. Wow. All 10 hit. And so live turned ten dollars into fifteen hundred and eighty-seven dollars. So shout out to you, so live. That's a hell of a Man, that a boy. And congratulations wow. on he, the dub. Ooh, he stung them, boy. That is a he good hit. Stung right there. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's opening day. The long baseball season is about to get started. Uh, terrible job by Major League Baseball not having any games at one. Well, it was supposed to be one game at one o'clock, but it got rained out. You've already had two games rained out. Is for that today, to the Braves, the Braves Phillies got rained out, and the Mets Brewers. I think <laughs> three yeah. o'clock. I think is the first game today. So is three right? o'clock. I think the Orioles are yeah. playing at three o'clock. I can't remember who they're playing off the top of my head. But um, uh, by the way, I'll have a, a I'll have a winning baseball parlay at two o'clock on my live show of the bullpen later today. So stick around for that. I'll put that out there. But go ahead, Mike. Yeah, make sure you tune into that on the bullpen today. We got four Guardians topics we're going to run through today. I want to start with this one, though. We did the over-unders on props on Tuesday with you guys. Individual player props. Yeah. Let's go to the win total for this team. 0-0. Zero and zero. They tweeted out the road to 162-0 and zero starts today. Vegas, and FanDuel specifically, has their win total set for 79.5 wins this year, guys. If you had to bet on one side of the equation, the over, 79.5 wins, or the under, which side would you take? Bowl, we'll start with you. Ooh. I would go over. Uh, I've got the Guardians finishing right around 500, which would be 81 wins. I think I, I think they probably win somewhere between 75 and 85 is, is the likely range for the Guardians. But since I've got more numbers above 80 than below, I, I think if I had to predict them right now, I'd say they go 82 and 80. And so I'll say just over. Uh, part of that's because the division's – you know, it, it's getting better, but it's very it me- it's better. mediocre, though. I think nobody's it's be very good, think. though. I mean, yet. there's no World Series contenders. Here. No, no, no. The White Sox stink. Yeah, but the other four teams are all decent. Yeah, I think it's, I think divisions gonna be better than people think. Yeah, you know, I obviously am buying into your uh, Tigers craziness a little bit. <laughs> last night in my draft, I took both Spencer Torkelson and then Casey Mize late in the draft. There you go. So, uh, uh, but but. I think I could see the Twins, the Guardians, the Tigers, and even the Royals yeah, yeah. finishing within six or eight games of each other. Yeah. I think it's close. I would take the over yeah. on 79 and a half. That's easy to me. I don't think they're going to have a losing record again. I, I actually think they're going to be close to 85. Meisel, Zach Meisel makes fun of me all the time that I'm always a little bit more bullish than even bull yeah. on, on the yeah, Guardians. You are. So I, I just I really like the rotation. I, I, think, I don't think they're that far away. I agree. We talked the other day that they overachieved a couple years ago, and they yeah. did. But they underachieved last year. They did. And they can flip this. They're not that far from flipping this. If they could just figure out a couple of positions, they could easily be in that 82, 83, 84, 85, even maybe a little bit higher win total because of how good the rotation is and the bullpen. So I am I like where they're at. Now, I, I do think the, the division's better. I do like the Tigers this year. I actually, I'm down on the Twins, but I'm down on the Twins every year. I never liked yeah. Minnesota. I like Kansas City as sort of a surprise team. They're not going to win 90, but I think no. Kansas City's going to be better than people think. Yeah. Uh, that lineup is not bad, and their pitching's getting better. They spent a little bit of money this year on the rotation. I think Detroit's coming. I think it's going to be a good division race, but I like the Guardians for around 85 wins this year. I got, I'm going with the over as well. I got them right under 85. I got them at 84 um, because I love the pitching rotation that they got there. They, the pitching is still good to me, and I think that you know with with Steven coming in there, he's going to he's really focused on hitting, and I think that they're going to figure some things out hitting as this season go on. And I think the hitting to be a lot better than it was last year. So I got them winning about 84 games. Um, 
and that's a solid that's a solid season to me. I'll take that. They have a great chance to get off to a good start with a four-game series against what will be what was the worst team in baseball last year and will should be, be once again yeah. this year, yeah. along with the White Sox, uh, Colorado, maybe Washington. Those are probably the worst teams in baseball on paper at the moment. But um, So I, I think they have an opportunity to get off to a good start. I'll be curious to see Carlo, what Carlos Carrasco looks what like. What he's got left. Okay. Yeah. You know, when he gets out there. And you mentioned Stephen Volk. By the way, check. I tweeted about this. Obviously, Jason knows about this. But uh, Zach Meisel wrote a really good article in The Athletic today about Stephen Vogt. It was really good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Well, Zach went to Washington and yeah, spent a few days. <laughs> Not stalk him. But he went to Washington during yeah. the offseason and spent a few days with them. Yeah. And go back and find the first piece that he wrote from Washington. Yeah. It was terrific. And then he held some stuff back. And dropped it today. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Zach does a great job. But I'm excited to see what Stephen Vogt's got uh, in terms of being a manager. I think he's – I'm curious to see how this goes because we've got more and more guys now who – you know, it used to be if you want to be a manager, you had to go to double AA, A, triple A, and you had to work right. your way up. Right. Now, guys are leaving. David Ross did it. Uh, Stephen Vogt's done it. Rocco Baldelli's not that far removed from no, his No, there's a lot of guys in there's recent years. Craig Council. There's more and more guys that well, are – Well, Aaron really Boone went from the field to the To the booth. To the booth. And managing. he didn't manage the was minors he, at all. Was he playing just two years ago? Two years ago. Two he years retired. ago. Yes. Last year he was a bullpen coach for the Mariners, and now here he is as a manager yeah. of, of Cleveland. So hey. this is sort of becoming a trend. And I, I, I never wrote about it, but I talked about it when I was at the winter meetings. Um, I, or uh, Yeah, the winter meetings in Nashville. I was just talking to some teams. And they said, you know, it's too early to say if this is going to be the new trend, but certainly there's more and more teams that are willing to give young guys a chance who are not that far removed from the game. Because, you know, I think we're seeing nowadays that they, uh, one of the biggest pieces of being a manager or a coach is how you connect with your players. Yes. yes. You know, players are more, just as human beings, younger people are a little more sensitive now. I, I'm not even saying that in a bad way. I know I know a lot of older people say that in a bad way. I don't I don't mean it in a bad way. I, I, I do. Think it, I do. I do. I do, too. I think, it's, I think it's mixed. I think there's good things about it, and yeah. I think there's bad things about it. It's good that young people tend to be more caring, but sometimes, you know, there's, listen, it's, it's, there's good and bad in all of it. But the bottom line is, that's the way it is. Yes. And so, it's important. You can't, like, Tony La Russa doesn't work. Right. He don't work anymore. Right. You can't just start yelling at these guys. It's just that uh, you Why can not? stop. Hey, you it, can, is, it, it got results out of me. Well, and it's a different sport also. True. But the point is, there's something about, hey, these guys, feel like they can relate to this guy more, even beyond being sensitive and younger. There's a connection that you can make because you know this guy has recently gone through what yeah. you went through. And in Stephen Vogt's case in particular, he didn't have any easy path to no. the big leagues. No. He had to grind and claw and scrape and do whatever he had to get an opportunity. And when he got the opportunity, he like took him. advantage of it and actually made an all-star team for a guy to, for a while to get to the majors. And really the entire coaching staff is significantly younger than, than Tito's staff. And, yeah. and Tito's a Hall of Fame manager. He's going to go into Cooperstown, and, and there's no debate about that. Yeah. But there's a lot of people around that organization that it just felt like we just needed an injection of some fresh blood. Yes. And that's nothing against Tito. No. That's nothing against the job that he did, but they, they needed to get a little bit younger. Carl Willis is now the OG. He is very much... Uh, the figurehead that everybody, it, and everybody Sandy's looks still to. there. Sandy's still there. Yeah, but yeah. that's but the rest of the coaching the rest staff of is young. Are yeah. young. Everybody's really, really young. Yeah. early in their careers now, starting out. Albernez is sort of the new bench coach. He's really young, not far removed from playing. Yeah, uh, Valleca, the hitting coach, he's been here for a couple of years yeah, now, but, but he's young. young. Yeah, so it's a very young staff. It went from a, a really old staff with Tomarlo Hale and some of those guys to a really young coaching staff now. I think that that's exactly what they need. Um, I think you. Once you see the old way kind of is ran its course, how do you get these guys energized? How do you get these guys excited about playing again? Well, you get some new younger guys in there that brings energy. You know, like for me, this is football towards baseball. Like it was a more energy. It was more music being pumped at practice. It was guys that I can relate to. When I went to like Kyle Shanahan versus, I don't know, an older coach. When I was with Pete Chuck, Carroll? P- Chuck Pagano. And, uh, no, Pete has, is all about He's fun. like a young guy. Yeah, right? he all about fun. Like <laughs> yeah. Chuck Pagano and, yeah, yeah. And with the Colts. So like it was totally different. When right. I got there, I was like, what in the world is this? I'm used yeah. to like the music blaring and stuff like that. So I think that same thing could go with baseball. You know, get these guys excited. Have some young guys that speak 
speak the same language, that understands exactly what they're going through, that can relate to them. And I think that you'll get results from that. And I think that's what we'll see this season. And one more thing on Tito. One thing I really I liked about the way he's handled this, because Tito's still part of the organization. Yeah. He's still getting paid by them. He wanted no part to be yeah. anywhere near that team right yeah. now. He's like, you know, Steven needs to do it his way. It needs to be his voice. And Tito is in Arizona, but he was nowhere near that team. I think eventually you might see him come back around. But right, right now he wants vote to establish himself. And then when, you know, they've, they're now obviously out of good year. So you might see Tito now come up around the minor league facilities sure. and, and check out some of the minor league guys and that sort of thing. Uh, and then eventually, you know, maybe next year or so, Tito maybe starts filtering back around, but right now he wants to distance himself from Stephen Vogt, and I, I just, I, I just yeah. appreciate the way that when, Tito's handled this. When I had him, when I interviewed him a few weeks ago, he made the point of saying, like that was his, he didn't Tito, he did not want to be a distraction. He yep. didn't want anybody looking at him. Yep. He, so you he telling me he's not going he to pull up on the scooter? No, no, dang. that's done. He's going to be living in Arizona he year didn't, round. No, he didn't. I don't think he. Oh yeah. I don't think he had I, he actually he still comes back here for he still has doctor's appointments here. Mm. I don't know if he still does. I know this past winter he was back a couple of times for yeah. for well, checkups at the clinic. Uh, great great uh, Yeah, they got great medical here. here. And and so but like even part of the managerial search he he wanted he's like this is you no, guys. Good. You, you got to do that. Yeah. You know why? He you know why he decided to not want to do anything anymore? Because he was mad that somebody stole his scooter last year, and that was <laughs> the true. last straw. That he was, said, that was "I'm it. done with y'all. I'm done. I'm, I'm living in a warm weather the rest of my life." Go ahead, Mike. So you guys all mentioned the rotation. You guys all took the over on the wins. Yeah. MLB.com released their top ten rotations for 2024, and I thought this list was pretty interesting. Steve, you Mike, like before that. we talk about this, did any of the guys yesterday take the under? We didn't do that yesterday with the guys. Oh, I so thought you did it with sure. the guys yesterday. No. These are MLB's top 10 rotations. Okay, I want to see this list because yeah. I couldn't find it. The Mariners at one. Yeah. The Braves two. Phillies three. Dodgers four. Dodgers Giants five. Four? Padres six. Blue Jays seven. Diamondbacks eight. Now, this was put out before they signed Jordan Montgomery, so they may have. Ad- well, may he have won't pitch for a month, after. but he will be there. Uh, then the Cleveland Guardians at nine, and a few teams tied at 10. I like a, C- do you agree with the the rankings? And I mean, B, how they do with the Guardians? The Giants. So the Giants have Logan Webb, but they got. I don't they sign see Blake the, Snell. The Padres fix they rotate because they was all about. They here. got Darvish and they've got uh, they, like two years ago. They, they was all about Cease. hitting with no. Pitch they got yet. Cease. Yeah, I like the Padres. I actually, I think the Dodgers are way too high. They, well, really? they've, got a, they've got a ton of injury concerns. Ton well, Otani's not pitching. Well, yeah, they got Otani. I mean, Glasnow so, is always hurt. I know. Paxton's an injury risk. Yeah. Uh, I think the Dodgers. What's I, the, what's the, but uh, they've got a ton of depth. they got a, a bunch of good young arms. they got Bueller coming back soon. Yeah. I know Yamamoto got off to a bad start. Bobby but Miller. Everybody thinks he's going to be great. They was love the Bobby Miller. They like Gavin Stone. No, the Yankees rotation stinks. Derek Cole's going to be Derek Cole's out. Can yeah. I see that list again? The only one I have a beef with is really the Giants. I, um, the Blue Jays got Barrios. They got Gossman. Gossman's healthy. Um, there was a chance he was going to miss opening day. Yeah. They've got Chris Bassett, who's uh, a good pitcher. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like the, I like the Guardians rotation better than... Uh, well, I, who do the... I can't think of the Giants I, rotation I would take the Guardians Webb over. And, I would take the Guardians over Toronto. I would. Uh, I like the Guardians. Well, I think in your mind, you're assuming Bieber is going to be back to being Bieber. Yeah. And if that's the case, then yes. Yeah. And Gossman's an injury risk. Barrios is inconsistent. I don't have a major problem with them being nine. I mean, they might be seven. They might be eight. When Mike sent it out and said nine, I thought, man, that seems low. Right. That feels low. But those rotations are all, it's close. Where were the Rays on that? Were they in there? No. I believe they were tied for 10. Yeah, I mean. Also, the Guardians just made some trades. Bunch of nobodies, but they they traded I saw cash new... considerations for yeah, Peter Strzelecki. No, that's not that's oh. not a. And they acquired Zach Kent thing. for international bonus. Yeah, bonus. none of those uh, those are non-factors. Uh, yeah, I think it's about right. <laughs> I I actually I'm trying to think. I, they, they, the Giants have Kyle Harrison, who's a top prospect, who's going to be starting for them. I would t- I would actually take the Guardians over the Giants. And I, I'm with you. I'd probably take them over the Blue Jays. So I, I think I'd have them seven. I, 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 yeah, I'd pump them up probably to six or seven. But not not any higher than that. I mean, the Mariners' rotation is really good. When when uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when Gavin Williams is in there, I think they're top four. Right. I think part of the reason they're nine is because. 
First of all, Gavin Williams is hurt right yeah. now. McKenzie, Tristan McKenzie, you worried about it's injury. A question. It is. And Bieber and Williams have only done it for one year. Yeah. If if they. Bybee. Bybee. I'm sorry. Biber. Biber and William. Uh, Biber. Bybee and Williams. <laughs> now I'm combining them. Bybee and Williams have only done it for one year. If Bybee and Williams are as good or better this year than they were last year, then the Guardians will be like four or five next yeah. year. Yeah. Well, they'll lose Bieber, but. But yeah. they'll be they'll, they'll be, be higher on the list. It's all about if McKenzie stays. So I think there. when they look at Toronto and maybe San Francisco, they look at two pitchers on the top who have done it longer, probably, and which is why they've got them higher. And one other little note yeah. on vote: the one thing that I was kind of curious to see, and, and I don't know if there's really a definitive answer to this. He was only in Seattle one year, but Seattle is very much like Cleveland in terms of the way that they can go about developing pitching. They've got they've got a ton of young arms in that system, and I'm just wondering what he glean from Seattle that he can now bring to Cleveland. Because I think Seattle, uh, Tampa, and Cleveland do it better than anybody in terms of yeah. how they develop young pitching. I, with Seattle, I feel like it's more <laughs> recent that they've gotten better. Oh, it is. It. it for sure is. You know, but they've got Logan Gilbert and George Kirby, Kirby and, and, and Brian Wu, although he's hurt to start the season. Bryce Hancock, Miller, my guy. Bryce Miller, Hancock. Bryce Miller, Miller, right. What's the yeah. team that you said throws the pitch that's, Tampa. that's messing up their Tampa. Elbow? I well, think that's part of it. I wonder if they're out of luck this year because their rotation right now I, I, is I, is not impressive, at least on paper. They're but slider. that seems to be the case quite a bit. The way they throw a slider. There's something going on with the way that they yeah. teach the slider. Well, I'm I hoping think. now. I'm, I'm hoping since I drafted him in the uh, third, <laughs> fourth, third round of my fantasy draft that Tyler Glass now will stay healthy yeah. with the Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> although you know we'll see. But uh, by the way, one other thing, uh, I wonder what the crowd's going to be like in Oakland. Non-existent. I mean, it's even on and, you know on opening day, even other teams that don't draw yeah, like Cleveland yeah. do well. Is this the last year in Oakland? No, no, they got they a couple, they got a couple left. Yeah, they got to build a whole. They, they haven't not, even built the stadium they, yet. They sh- you should go and enjoy it while it's there. I guess we should Fans look are angry. See, I guess we should see what their opening day attendance was in like last second. year. Right, but now they, they know for sure they're day. going to Vegas. Yeah, I know. So you you should, didn't know for sure you last year. It should go up so you can support them because they're going to be going. No, the fans are pissed. I understand that, but and the team stinks. You're going to be so mad that you not that once they go, you're going to be like, dang, I should have went. The team stinks. I would, I would at least go. That stadium is a. Dump I've never all. actually been there, but oh, it looks awful. Like literal toilet water <laughs> flowing through. You about the, Have the, you been there? Where yeah. the Raiders used oh. to play on it in the, the preseason. I was there for Raiders game. I, we had yeah. uh, we used to we used to play them in the preseason when I yeah. was in Seattle. Yeah. And if you fall on that stuff, oh, on that it's end, like cement. Oh my it's god, it's like it you mean? cement green. Yes. Oh, oh my man. goodness, you would you would see guys. Not try to make no tackles or try to get fall out because it's gonna hurt. You go white meat, all white meat. We did a story on that. Tom Reed did a story for us on the dirt at Oakland and how hard it was and how just it just tore guys up. Yeah, hundred percent right. Oof. So I I looked it up. Yeah. Now this is an article published yesterday in the Mercury News Times, which is a it's large, in the Bay Area. Yeah, Bay Area newspaper. This is written by Jason Mastrodonato. I want to read you the first three first three paragraphs. Short. Ready or not, here come the Oakland A's fans. As soon as, as early as noon on Thursday, fans are expected to begin lining up to enter the parking lot wow. at the Coliseum. Told you. But many won't actually buy a ticket to the A's opening uh, night game against the Cleveland Guardians, dang. a sign of protest against the team's pending move to Las Vegas in 2028. While 26,805 people went to the team's opening game at the Coliseum last year, almost as many have already signed a petition agreeing to show up but not enter the game on Thursday while boycotting the owner, said Brian Johansson, founder of A's, group, uh, A's fan group Last Dive Bar and one of the organizers of this boycott. Ugh. Quote, this is going to be like Burning Man, but we're not going to actually set anything on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they already set the team on fire. Yeah, right. Uh, um, yeah, it's, that, that kind of sucks. It, it loses excitement. But I understand. I'd be yeah. pissed if I were, yeah. were an A's fan. Yeah. You know, I'd be pissed about that, but... You know, between the team being terrible and the team moving out of town, so they need some clarity on that franchise. Hopefully, now it seems like they have it. It's a shame that Oakland. I mean, Oakland's lost everything. They had the Warriors gone, yeah. they had the Raiders gone, yeah. A's gone. It's a shame because that's a great fan base. Yeah, 